let's talk about footwear. My name is Dr. Splickle, podiatrist and human movement specialist, and I want to take a moment to speak about footwear and some of the most misunderstood controversies around what a shoe needs to really feature and show to optimize human movement and human performance. So the first myth that I want to go over is that a shoe has to have structure. There has to be a stiffness to the shoe to support the foot. Um, oftentimes people will say that the foot is not designed to support itself on these artificial surfaces, which is actually not true. The ideal shoe when it comes to human foot function and human movement, you really do want a shoe that allows freedom of movement that actually doesn't have a stiffness to it. Now, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, but the more freedom of movement that you have in that shoe, the more you would be able to achieve what's called natural foot function. This is especially important for those who are in athletics or trying to get as optimal foot to core sequencing, how to connect to their foundation and through their posture. And this is extremely important for those who are athletic and who are lifting. Your second myth when it comes to footwear is that shoes are supposed to have cushion. We get injuries from excessive impact. So therefore, our shoes should and need to have cushion. Now, where this myth comes in is really built around the running boom. So in the 1970s in the running boom, they were seeing a lot of running related injuries because of excessive impact forces. So their response to that was to put cushion in shoes. Unfortunately, they still saw the same number of running related injuries with the cushion in the shoes. So we know that it's not the cushion. Now cushion in a shoe actually absorbs and damps and takes away the important sensory information that your nervous system needs when you move dynamically. So ideally, if we want to bring in as much sensory information as possible, you want to look for a shoe that has less cushion. The less cushion in the shoe, the more you are connecting to your foundation, connecting to the sensory stimulation of each step that you take. Yes, again, there's exceptions to every rule, but ideally we are trying to tap into our nervous system through our feet with a shoe with as minimal cushion as possible. Now, the final myth that I want to go over is that our shoes are supposed to have an arch support in them. This is especially important when it comes to sandals in summer. So if you are looking at a shoe that is totally flat, a flip-flop like this, people are going to freak out thinking that this is awful for the foot because it needs that arch support. This pancake shoe is going to injure a foot that has a arch. Again, it's a myth. Your foot is designed to dynamically stabilize itself through the contraction of the muscles. These muscles are part of our innate loading response, our innate postural response, and you, you don't need to have an arch support to keep the arch in your foot. What you do want to do is strengthen your feet, strengthen the small muscles of your feet, and they are designed to then support your arch. Again, there are exceptions to every rule, which means people who have perhaps excessively flat feet may not feel completely comfortable in a totally flat shoe. However, we try to not make generalizations saying that everybody needs to have an art support, everybody needs to have cushion, and everybody needs to have a stiffness and a structure to the shoe. For natural foot function, we want to try to get as close to a naturally supporting footwear as possible. This means less structure, more freedom of movement in the shoe, less cushion, more connection to the sensory foundation from the ground in every step that we're taking, and less arch support so that the muscles in our feet can start to support itself. To learn more about all of these footwear variances and these different myths around footwear, please visit DrEmilySplickle.com and always stay barefoot strong.